feel free to give us a little uh, background on yourself before you tell us about uh, e-bikes and your experience in the legislature. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Can everybody hear me okay? Thumbs up. That's great. Hey. Okay, great. Um, so my name is Ashley Carrick. I'm up here in Fairbanks. I actually was supposed to be there in person with you all and really wanted to be, but I just got turned around on my flight to Anchorage because of the wind down there. So um, sorry, I can't join you all in person, but I did, uh, just as a brief background, I did grow up in Anchorage. I'm very familiar with the trail systems in Anchorage, and especially the coastal trail was a huge favorite growing up. And Moved up here in 2010 to go to college at the University of Alaska Fairbanks and have stayed up north ever since. And one of my main priorities as a legislator is actually to improve Alaska's recreational economy, kind of bolstering that and the tourism economy as well. And then just having better interconnectivity of trail systems, especially in the northern region, we have a lot of amazing trail systems and they're not always super well connected or labeled and utilized and that was something I really liked growing up in Anchorage having greater connectivity for trail systems. So all of that sort of got me interested in the idea of different um, emerging forms of transportation and recreation and electric bicycles are definitely one of those and there is currently no definition for what an e-bike is in Alaska statute. And so it's on one hand, you can think about House Bill 8 that was passed last year by the legislature as regulating electric bikes. But really, all we were seeking to do was define electric bicycles in statute. And in doing so, it puts sort of an upper threshold and a lower threshold on what constitutes an electric bicycle. And I think you know, when we talk with the uh, other panelists on who owns an e-bike store, you know, can get into some more of the details about that. But kind of the, the main impetus here is one to just update statute to reflect technological advancements in the way that Alaskans are using bicycles and using trail systems. And then also having clarity for consumers and tourists and other visitors about what, um, what can be used where we think about Alaska trails, one of our biggest uh, discussions is always motorized versus non-motorized transportation. And so the bill that I had was defining electric bicycles within this certain set of parameters as bicycles. In other words, absent separate regulations from uh, municipalities or state departments, which would have the ability to make separate regulations non-motorized uh, transportation that includes bicycles would also allow electric bicycles and uh, trails which don't allow um, uh, don't allow bicycles, uh, not many do, but if they did, you know, the e-bikes would also be restricted potentially in those areas. Um, so one of the one of the main things that helped to sell this bill to my colleagues was the idea that you would be able to have this set set of uh, standards or parameters around what constitutes an, an electric bicycle, but we're also giving pretty broad municipal control and state department control, for example, Department of Natural Resources to make separate regulations. Um, but it, it provided that base level, that floor for what we're gonna consider an e-bike. And when we look at statutes too, we see that we already have definitions for a huge variety of motorized or kind of semi-motorized transportation. We have definitions for mopeds. We have definitions for motor scooters. There's actually a completely separate definition in statute for segways. That's a special carve out. Um, so to me, it just felt like common sense that we would have a definition pertaining to electric bicycles. And we've seen such a huge uptick in their use and in the potential for business surrounding um, electric bikes. So. That's pretty much the, the basic um, you know, impetus behind the bill. And we did pass with huge bipartisan support. So 59 out of 60 members of the legislature supported this bill. Um, we had just one member of the Senate who voted no and one member of the House who initially voted no, but then voted to concur on the bill and behind the scenes had said was actually very supportive of the concept of the bill. So, 
59 out of 60 is a kind of a tough number to achieve on any issue in the legislature. So it was really broadly supported. Um, Republicans, Democrats, independents were all kind of on the same page about this definition and what it would look like. And then in addition, had a lot of groundswell support from municipalities who are really looking to have a base place to start for their own regulation. And just for context, the municipality of Anchorage actually has the exact language that we were trying to adopt into state statute. So what already exists and is the status quo in terms of uh, defining electric bicycles and regulating them in Anchorage was essentially what we were trying to apply for the whole state. And this is also language that's used at the, um, at the national level. So various states also use this language. Um, and with that, I'll just, I'll leave it open to other panelists and questions. Great, well, I'll start out with one while everybody on the uh, chat and in the room here uh, thinks about it. Um, obviously, I don't want you to uh, speak for the uh, governor, but the bill uh, was eventually uh, vetoed. Did you ever receive any um, explanation about that? I remember reading the news article, but I can't recall if there was any sort of explanation. And then I guess I'll make it a two-parter. Do you plan to introduce the bill again uh, next session? Yeah, so the explanation for the governor's veto was, I would say a little bit counterintuitive from the perspective of myself and others who worked on the legislation. Um, the idea from the governor's office, and we received about three or four different reasons. So the main one that kept cropping up, though certainly not the only one, was that this bill would be over-regulating. Um, and in fact, their potential for over-regulation is a lot higher without this legislation in my mind, because as it stands right now, if a municipality would like to define an electric bicycle as being a much um, lower threshold, a lot, a lot more limiting than this legislation, they would have the ability to do that because there's no standard definition in Alaska statute saying what an e-bike is on a basic level. So in my mind, the potential for over-regulation is actually greater without having something to work with um, in state statute. And we haven't seen that yet, but I do think that as the technology continues to evolve really rapidly, you could see um, a tendency to over-regulate. And so that was a big part of why fast planning up here in Fairbanks, our transportation advisory committee was strongly in support. Um, Homer also was really strongly in support because they also have a strong tourism and recreational tourism uh, economy down there. So we, we just kept seeing that argument crop up as a, actually an argument for um, helping prevent over-regulation. So more in line, I guess, with what the governor was saying. And based on those conversations, um, I do wish that we had been able to engage the administration in a much more of a dialogue throughout the legislative process. We did try to interact with them and it just didn't come to fruition. So I would, absolutely still think the legislation is common sense. I still think there's lots of bipartisan support for it. And um, can't introduce it again immediately this coming session, but there is a Senate version of the bill that could pass, perhaps with some amendments from the governor's office, um, if the administration would like to communicate those. And if nothing else happens over the course of this next year in 2025, if I'm reelected, I do intend to reintroduce the bill and hopefully move it through the process even more quickly next time because this is uh, this has been a long time coming and I think this bill it also just kind of goes to show that even sometimes the simplest piece of legislation can still be difficult to achieve on a political level so um, that's where we're at. <laughs>